Hello, Nigel with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Today is Saturday, November the 16th, 2024. And yes, another kit review, but this time it's something a little bit different, or different from me anyway. And um, here we have, this is the Magic Factory uh, US Navy Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier, CVN 78 Gerald R. Ford. So um, this is the first of her class, and she is absolutely massive, 100,000 tonnes displacement and 13 billion dollars to build absolutely unbelievable piece of kit and of course when i was at telford i was hanging around the um the uh, tiger hobby stand chatting to gary and he had them there um for about 60 pounds i think at the show and they're also you can also buy from magic factory a pre-painted deck so you don't have to paint the deck which is probably a good thing especially for the newer modelers because it's quite complex but um yeah, it's, it's a very, very nice kit. I haven't really looked through. I've had a quick peek in the box. It is a lesson in packaging, I can tell you that. Um, but it's 1700 scale, and it's a, a very, very nice looking ship, in my, in my opinion. As you can see, the island is way, way back, giving it that sort of HMS Nelson look to it. Um, and it's, it's, it's just beautiful. And I would like to see one in 350 scale, and I think... There are hints that Magic Factory might do one. There is a resin one out there, a 3D printed one. If you want to go and have a look at that, have a look at Kenneth's review, Norwegian Modeling Bench. He's done a fantastic review of it, but when you see the kit and what it costs, you might be kind of, oh, I don't know, you know. Um, 3D printed stuff is great, but when you've got big parts, I think I prefer styrene, especially for the hulls. I mean, 3D printed aircraft and 3D printed, you know, placements and bits of the island and you know the radars and all that then yeah but not the complete hull i don't know i just don't i don't know just doesn't seem right to me being an old man but anyway um <clears throat> the kit number is 6401 as i say 1700 scale we'll have a look around the box here you can see on the side we have um aircraft elevators are able to move along the track not really sure if that's uh Something we want. Uh, well details of the newest status in 2023. Water liner full hull is optional. That's a good one. Uh, jet blast deflector and hangar gate can be opened and closed. Maybe that's not such a good thing. We're gonna, probably going to have big plastic hinges there or something. Providing the latest F-35C2 Lightning II fighter and MQ-25 Stingray aerial refueling drones, including decals of multi-fighter squadrons. So... Um, you can see the actual ship itself there, and we've got all the information about Magic Factory. I believe Gary over at Tiger Hobbies is the importer for Magic Factory. And we can see on the end of the box here, if I can get it, here we go. You can see it just doesn't look right, does it? It's got this, this hull, and then the whole hull, the whole ship is about three times bloody wider than the hull. It's ridiculous. Anyway, have some information about Gerald R. Ford there, and we have some codes you can scan there should you want to freeze and then scan them with your phone um, and we've got information about it here and then we've got the aircraft that are included so we've got some F-18 um, F's, F-18E's, 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 F-35C's, there's our Stingray refueling drones which I never even knew existed before I got this kit and then we've got some, um, are they Hawkeyes? I think they are aren't they? Uh, a couple of those in there as well so they're very nice, nice looking at an aircraft um, unfortunately, they show on the box here, we've got some um, MH60s or whatever they are, something, AH60s, uh, no, MH60s for Marines, isn't it, or Navy, I don't know, I'm talking about the bum again, um, but there we go, so we've got the, but we don't have those in the kit, so we have a few planes, but we don't have those helicopters, I believe, I, I, I don't, I can't see them on the box, um, good old name again, Peter uh, Frokovich, uh, he's done the uh, artwork for this. He does some fantastic work and works a lot with um, with uh, Wing Leader on their productions. So what have we got here? We have a very large box. I've got the camera lifted up. You can see these lines here. These lines here. This is an A3 cut, an A2 cutting mat. And people ask, people have been asking, why such a massive box for a 700 scale ship? And here's why. Because it's a massive ship. Um, there's the hole from there to there okay so uh, yeah it needs a box this big they could have made the box slightly shorter I guess it could have been what 40 millimeters shorter but um, then you might have had damage they've done it this size for the packaging because as you can see this packaging is absolutely superb 
So we've got this plastic tray, which is holding these parts or keeping them all separate so they don't clatter into each other and get damaged. So that is absolutely wonderful. So that can go up there out of the way. Of course, I'm at a situation now where I can't put boxes on the floor anymore. I do have Dotty, if you're aware, we've got a new, uh, new addition to the family here at Nigel's Model Image. We've got Dotty. And funnily enough, just like Jess used to do, she's been sat here chewing and chewing and chewing on the plastic tray that I use to drain the water strain, uh, strainer on my um, compressor. She's been chewing that. And as soon as I start talking on the camera, she stopped and gone and let down on her bed under the bench. So um, somebody said she's a reincarnation of Jess. I don't think so, but it seems a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, so there we go. So we've got some plastic sprues in here. We've got two sprues in there. We've got two in there. Um, so the packaging down here isn't so great, but it's all held in place by that big tray on the top. So that's all good. Oh look, we've got decals facing up, which is a complete and utter pain. I don't know why they do this. Um, so we've got lots and lots of decals there. We've got lots and lots of sprues. And I've got to make sure I don't put any of this down because a certain young lady will be after it. I'm not sure if it's got a hanger deck or not, but we'll have a look. It must have some sort of hanger deck because the lifts work. So it must have the, um, the sides open. So yeah, we, we shall see. Let's... Uh, Let's have a look. Right, so first of all, we've got this lovely colour call out, which is really glossy, unfortunately. So here we have, this is our deck. And as you can see, it's pretty complex with all the decals required and all the painting and everything. But there, um, you know, there's great guides for how it all goes. Hopefully the decals will go down nice. I didn't notice the manufacturer. Um, it says made in China, so they're not... Um, they're not cartograph or anything, but you know, some of the Chinese decals are absolutely fine. Some of them are absolutely useless. So we shall see. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've built a Magic Factory kit, if, if the decals are to be warned about, and then we'll have to look at maybe selling it on. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's our deck guide, and then here's our aircraft. And you can see we've got our F-35s and F-18s here, and then we've got our Hawkeyes down here. So, and the drone. So yeah, we've got decals for the little red bit. I'm guessing they've got greyish white here, C311. So that is, that's the, these have all got, um, these have all got FS numbers. So we can look those up. We can compare them to what they're calling out here and just assume they're probably right. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the colours of an F35. We'll have to look at that because I know there's that special haze grey colour, isn't it? You can get from MRP with the, with the metallic um, after coat that goes over it, but uh, we shall see. Um, and I'm also not sure if if these would both be on the same ship, like that one and that one. Um, do you know? I just realised that I do not know with all these aircraft. So we've got the Squadron Two One Three Black Lions. Squadron 37 Raging Bulls, Squadron 87 Golden Warriors, Squadron 31 Tomcatters, Squadron 82 Marauders, Squadron 15 Valiants, and then we've got, um, these are US Navy refueling drones, so I guess they're not sort of assigned to any squadron or anything, they're just um, general. And here we've got Early Warning Squadron 124 Bear Aces. So... Would they all be on the same ship? Please answer me in the comments below. Interesting. Right, so coming over the page here, we have a beautiful image of the actual ship itself. So we've got bow, stern, got the island, and then we've got all the, um, the actual ship itself. It looks like we do have hangar deck detail in there, so that's really cool. So we've got um, AK real colour coats. These are going to be the old AK colours, I should imagine, because I think all the new ones start with eights and nines. Uh, we've got Mr. Colour, so Mr. Hobby, which is a great choice. And then here we've got Tamiya XF. So you could do your translation into LP should you wish to. Um, but uh, yeah, very interesting to see these colours. Um, flat black. So that's going to be the, the boot line there. So very nice. Hull red um, will be LP18 if you're going to use lacquer paints. Okay, so instructions. Um, simple little A4 sort of size. Nothing on, on the back. 
all black and white by the look of it and we have 14 pages so let's have a look and see what this kit brings i'm going to pull the camera down a bit there we go that's better okay so we've got a lovely image there and then going into the book um <clears throat> i'm not sure this very much reminds me of like a it's like Meng, isn't it? It's like a, it's like Meng or a, a better quality trumpeter, because trumpeter always instructions always seem a bit yeah, on the printing, don't they? Um, these look very, very nice indeed. So we've got all our um, our logos there, our icons, recommended tools, health and safety. That you know, don't put the kit on the floor if you've got an eleven week old puppy in the house, that sort of thing. Um, and there we go. We've got all our sprue call outs there. It looks like all the parts are used. So we've got some. We get two of those by the look of it and two of those by the look of it so i'm not sure it says that about times one and then underneath in english it says times two so i don't know what's going on there we've got one pe that's really strange because it's saying here you've got the chinese and then it's got times one and then when it's in english it's got times two how strange is that but on the other sprues here you've got sprue a times one Sprue B times one, flight deck times one, ETC. So there we go. And we've got a little sheet of PE there as well. Nice touch. Okay, so going into the build, first things first, we're going to build the um, the bulge on the bow there. That's nice. It's going to go onto the onto the uh, lower hull there, and then we're going to add the upper hull if we're going for a full hull model. If not, just don't bother with that and stick it all to a baseboard. And then we're going to fill in this transom area here on the back. So this is all the, um, I still can't remember what this is called. So there we go. Um, so we've got all this area in the back here. And then we've got the lifts going together. Good look of it. Yep. We've got lifts on the side. There's some uh, open areas there where the ship's boats go. More of those here. All going onto the insides of the, uh, of the upper deck area. They call this the upper hull. But then you've got the upper, upper hull, haven't you? So uh, that's the hangar, the size of the hangar deck, isn't it? So then we have the, the sides going in here. We have the sides going in there. Okay, the hangar deck is actually part of the upper hull. And then we've got the side pieces going in here. Lots more little bits and pieces. Got some anchors going in the front there with the bulges above them. Um, and then we've got our lifts going in here. It looks like we have no hangar deck. Although we do seem to have something going on inside here. So that's obviously moulded in there, is it? We'll have a look in a minute. Um, so we've got some sort of hangar deck look looking base, but it's got a great big hole in the middle. Um, a bit weird. A bit weird. Okay, but we've got the open holes, but then we've got a great big hole where the hangar deck should be. Don't know. And then we've got these lifts going in. So the uh, platforms are going in. And it did say on the front of the box, didn't it? You can actually lift them and lower them. I'm not sure if you can or not. Um, but uh, we shall see. And there's the, uh, there, there they are in position there. Ah, we do have a hangar deck. Okay, so we do have a hangar deck. We're going to drop it in afterwards. So we've got all the lovely detail on the hangar walls here. We've got the lovely detail that's going to lead us into those big sort of um, rectangular with rounded corners i guess you'd call it i'd call them oval perhaps i don't know um openings in the sides um and we've got some stanchions in there as well so yeah get your get all your photographs up on google and you'll be able to see what color everything should be um there we go we've got some more detail going in here on the stern that's all looking beautiful and then we've got all the uh, deck detail hanging off the bottom of the deck here and then we're going to flip the deck over and stick it down to our main hull. And we've got our internal hangar, hangar deck going in. The hangar deck's got a roof as well. Look at that. We have all the detail on the hangar deck roof. Very nice for 700. Just paint all that white, give it a wash, and it'll look bloody great. Pick out some of the details. Get some bits of red and yellow and stuff going in there. It'll look great. Wonderful. Now we've got these um, the blast deflectors and everything going on. We've got these radar sponsons sticking out. These little bits here, these life rafts, I'm not sure what they are. I think they could be life rafts. Um, and then we've got no more radar here. Shame it doesn't tell you what anything is, and there's no colour call outs as you go through. So uh, that's a bit of a shame, but never mind. Um, and then here, uh, they're telling that's a Jeff's, 
Jet Blaster Flector Status Optional Parts. So it says they can be moved, but they can't be. You can actually just fit them up or down by the look of it. So we've got more of these rafts, I think they are. That radar sponsor in there. Look how wide this deck is. It's huge. Massive at the back. And then the island's going to go together. It looks like a fairly simple sort of uh, construction. If you look on YouTube, you want to see a build of this. Um, Amigraphy, Japanese uh, person, has done one of these. So um, I always say person because I always get confused with the Japanese because a lot of the Japanese channels, the builders are actually girls and they're very, very good. Um, so I never really know if it's a male or a female or whatever and I don't want to misgender people in this day and age, do I? So uh, there's that and then we've got the um, P going on there for the whatever they are. Uh, it'll be interesting to see J8. Is J a clear sprue? Because on that Taiho, we don't get clear windows for the bridge. Which is interesting. Let's have a look here. Do we have a clear sprue? Where's J? J. No, J is a grey sprue. So we're not getting clear windows on this one either. So we just have to paint them gloss black or something. Or paint them a very dark grey and give them a really high gloss sheen. They look pretty authentic then. Um, and then we've got parts of PE going in. So these are catwalks by the look of it. Going around the sides. Um, very nice indeed, catwalk there across the stern, so they're going to really add to it. We've got that one there, we've got to bend. Well, Moss will be able to build this, can't bend PE, god blimey. <laughs> um, and then here we've got our little drones going together, we've got our Hawkeyes going together. Um, F18E, F18F, or maybe they're Gs. Hang on, they, they're calling that an F18E, and they're calling that an F18E, that's an F18F. Or a G because it's twin seat. Um, this is an F35C, okay, because it's got the folding wings and no vertical takeoff. And then we have the stand, nice looking stand going together. It looks quite decorative. You probably want to make this on a piece of wood or something. And there we go. So there's the instructions. Um, it looks like a very, very nice kit. I've never built a 1700 scale ship. I've done the old Airfix 600 scale ships when I was a youngster, but never a 700. And that'd be interesting to see what it goes together like. So I'm going to put that box up there and I'm going to put the light on now so we can see what we're looking at because we're looking at plastic parts. Um, and we've got the decals to look at as well. So the decals are actually stapled shut. Oh, we've got the photo etch there. Look. So there's the photo etch. So I'm tempted not... Let me get these staples out and then I'll come back so we can have a good look at them. All right, so we've got our PE here. So you can see that's the catwalks. And they're very nice indeed, as you can see there. They are through etched. So very, very light coat of paint on there and they're going to look fantastic. Give them an etch primer first. Maybe just go over them with a sanding stick or something. If you go and watch Sen Navy's channel, he's a master ship modeler. And um, he always takes the plastic film off and then gets a sanding stick and goes over it. It's absolutely amazing. Amigraphy does it as well. And I'm surprised they never pick up a corner and drag it. It's, it's amazing. They, they don't do that. But very nice. Um, and then here we have... Oh my God, look at this. The size of these decals. These are individually printed, so you don't have to cut them out individually unless you want to. But we have all of our decals there for all of our air wing. Okay, so you can really feel your boots there. I'm not sure how many of each aircraft we get. Um, no doubt it will say in the in the sprue call out, so I didn't actually notice. Um, we've got four of the drones by the look of it. I don't know what the difference is there. Uh, we've got two, we've got three of the, they look like, the FAF, they, they look like F-35s, and then we've got, where's the rest? Where are the others? Where are the others? There's some drones there. Okay, so I don't know what these are. So we've got two drones, okay, because there's only one of those. We've got, I'm guessing these are F-18Es, and these are F-18Fs, and these are F-35s. So you're only getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine aircraft. Sorry, two, four, six, eight, 14, 16. You're only getting 16 aircraft. So 
you'd have to go get yourself some aftermarket ones. I'm not sure if um, if Magic Factory actually sell them. Go take a look. But um, I'm sure that somebody will do modern American aircraft in 700 scale. So that's that one. So we've got all those bloody decals. You're going to have hundreds left over. Where was the Hawk? I didn't see the Hawkeyes on there either. But, so you're going to have hundreds left over. So there we go. I'm assuming we've got two Hawkeyes. Um, because we've got two of the swirls for the, uh, for the sauce spot on the roof. 2023 Magic Factory made in China. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what these are like. And then here we have, oh, it's all decals. It's not painted. So you have all the stripes for your deck, all in decals. So they've actually pre-done this for you if you want to. The thing was, this, the kit was about 60 quid at the show. I think he said it retails about 63.95. Go take a look on the Tiger Hobby site if you want to get one. Um, but the deck was about £35 at the show. So you think, you know, is the painted deck really worth more than half the kit? Uh, I did actually buy this one. So if you don't see the paid promotion, that's why I did actually buy this. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's lots of carrier film around that 78. But if they go down well with some good setting solutions, maybe fine. But you can see all the carrier film around that 78. It'll make it easy to put down and it'll stay in shape. That's the one thing. Uh, and then we've got these circles here. Some are split, some aren't. So they're going to be a nightmare to get down. The carrier film looks looks minimal, so that's okay. As I say, the carrier film is fine if it goes down well, and it goes down well on, you know, you, you really want to gloss the deck before you put these down. But um, if, if it goes down, it goes down a set, so it's absolutely fine. The problem is when it doesn't go down. And that's when you get the, uh, the issues. Stuff like with the Takum 135th Apache. They are the worst decals I have ever come across in my life. They are awful. So um, there we go. There's our decals. Right, let's have a look. Let's get that bag over there. Let's have a look at this here. So we have this beautiful packaging with this plastic sheet, which is the upper. And then this deck is in here, look, so it can't rattle around, it can't move sideways, and it can't go up and down. And it can't damage the surface, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at the surface detail on there. It's beautiful. We've got all the tie downs in there. We've got all the marks here for the. I'm guessing these marks here are just fake because they would just be paint. But they're giving you these as marks, and your carrier film is going to go down in there, so it's going to disappear. So that's going to be really nice. So, what you could do, if for authenticity, what you could do is get this, get your deck, get a clear coat down, we'll paint it. Get a clear coat down, get your decals down, give it another couple of clear coats and then maybe start to sand it back and then you'll end up with the deck being flat and you won't have all these indentations in it. But then you'll fill the um, the holes, the tie down holes. So what you could do is gloss it, give it a wash, get the get these to light up. There's lots of different things you could do, I think, but um, I think it would be amazing to see this turn out. It would be beautiful, wouldn't it? But um, look at that for 700. It's huge massive so there's our deck and then here we have the lower hull um again this this in, injection molded there's your points there there's your points of injection so no seam lines well there are there's one there one there but they're absolutely you can, you can just about see them if you listen barely anything there beautiful and then all the detail on the stern here for your rudders and everything to go in so that's really nice and then we've got the the main part of the hull the upper hull here and unfortunately we do have some shrinkage along here okay but I think I'll be that'll disappear under a coat of matte paint because it's not that bad there's some shrinkage there at the front which is to be fair to magic factory is pretty much unavoidable um, they've tried as hard as they can they've thinned it out and put a set a slot in there but when you've got all this plastic here it's um very difficult to avoid shrinkage this here is because of this great big thick got this huge great thick wall in here which is probably unnecessary as a result we've got shrinkage and it's very difficult to fill because we've got portholes exactly where the shrinkage is. So I don't know if you can see that in the light, but it's there. Come on, camera, focus. 
don't know if you can see that, but it is there. But I got a feel under a coat of matte paint, it'll disappear. Especially if you're doing waterline, then you'll, you'll splash waves in that a bit. Maybe the boot line comes up to there, I don't know. And here, of course, you've got all this um, all this extra hull coming out, so it's going to be hidden under that anyway, actually, so it's not actually an issue. Um, and they would have some rippling on the skin anyway. So, there we go. You've got the same on this side, but again, it's, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. But that's beautifully moulded. It's nice and... Um, I can see why they've done this so thick. It's kept everything straight in all planes. It's not warped at all. Um, if I put it down on the flat bench, I mean, it's. I was going to say it's got a massive warp, but it's it's actually um, stepped. But uh, yeah, it's it's very nice. How's the fit on the bottom hull? What's that like? Well, there's naff all over that, guys. Slight finger pressure just to pull it together, but you can see it's um, it's pretty bloody good. And it's going to be easy just to glue it together and then just sand it smooth. But at the same time, you'll probably get rid of some of that because that shrinkage may be actually the lower side out rather than it shrinking in above. But, um, as I say, the, the the boot line might go there anyway. So, but you can see there, she's beautiful, beautiful looking ship. There she is from the stern there, you can see all that detail on the back, on the stern should I say. So yeah, very nice indeed, and absolutely over the moon with the packaging. So that is gorgeous, um, so you've got no fears about any damage happening to your kit. So let's have a look at some of these uh, plastic parts. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get all these bags open and then I'll come back. Okay, so that's all the staples out of the bag. It's worth remembering guys, if you do have a puppy or a kitten or you know any young animal that comes in the or any yeah, young it doesn't have to be a puppy, it could just be a young a young dog um, that comes in the room, be very, very careful with stuff like staples because you know all it takes is one little sniff and it sticks on their tongue and it goes in their throat. And not only is it the cost of the vets, but it's the you know the inconvenience to the animal and the health and everything it's just don't risk it don't go just pulling the bag because sometimes the staples will fly across the floor and before you can get to it the puppy's got it so yeah a, a puppy advice there from Michael's modeling bench ask me how I know I, I, Jess never did in that but she did get some stuff that I wish she hadn't and uh, you do sometimes forget so anyway um I'll just I'll unbag these and put them back in their relevant bag so I don't get them mixed up but I'll unbag these as they come, so it's in no specific order. It's going to be a bit all over the place. So we've got two sprues here. I've got, I'll put this one out of the way. So we've got two sprues here. So this is all part of the stand. And the stand looks very nice. You've got these sort of bolted, riveted, whatever, plates, which makes it all look very sort of, you know, industrial. Um, and then you've got the same on the end plates there. And then here we've got the bulge for the, uh, for the bow. That's all very nice. Nice to see they've moulded it in two halves so you don't get any shrinkage or anything. And they can also get the correct shape in it with the undercut and everything. So that's really nice. Um, so yeah, a little bit of seam work to do there, but I'm sure it'll go together beautifully being a modern kit. Also nice to see that Magic Factory used the system of putting the sprue gate actually on the mating surface rather than on the um, on the outer bulge. And that way it's, it makes it a lot easier to clean up. Um, that's going to be part of the upper deck there, and I think that is also, we've got ejector pin marks in there that we might want to get rid of. But you can see here that that's got a slight amount of damage. These uh, gussets are so, so thin. In fact, that one there is actually broken. So um, I may have done that, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is just grab a piece of masking tape and put that over that because I don't want that bit to get lost. We'll put that over like that. Okay, and then that part will not get lost. All right, so that could stay in there like that. Okay, so even if I sell this kit on, it's going to be a case of the model just having to glue that back on. But um, that is one of the problems when you have sprues in, you know, rather than being individually bagged, they're in these, uh, in these, you know, double bagged and everything. Stuff like that gets broken. So unfortunately. 
and really what I should have done is bagged it like that so that anything rubbing around wouldn't catch. I'll have to go back and look at the photos. I think it was bagged like that, wasn't it? So that's the, that's the first sprue looked at. Um, and then here we have, these are our lifts by the look of it. So we've got the upper surface of the lifts. With the lovely detail on there. Again, we've got these engraved lines where the decals and everything are going to go. It's probably not correct, but it's good that they show you where the decals go. And then we've got the underside here. And again, we do have some ejector pin marks and they all look to be slightly recessed, which is a shame. But you're never going to really see them because they're underneath. But it depends how fussy you want to be. Um, and then we've got these are the walls going around the outside of those. Um, so it looks like you have the choice of having them open or closed. So that's pretty cool if you don't want to see the hangar deck. But um, there we go, that's sprue B. But yeah, very nice indeed. 2023 Magic Factory, it's saying on here. So it's not that new, it's nearly, well, nearly at least a year old. So uh, there we go. We can also see on there that very fine moulding to give us that uh, saw sawtooth edge on there. Very nice. So that's so that we'll put that back in the bag how it should be. I'm not sure how it was. So there we go. In fact, we'll put it that way around so that that tape is at the other end. There we go. And then the second bag here is nicely individually bagged. And this looks like to be the parts of our hangar deck. Yes, it is. And again, this is also gorgeous. You can see we've got the floor of the hangar deck there with all the tie downs, all the access panels and everything in there. All beautifully done. And then over here, this is the roof detail. And obviously this is quite generic, but it's nice that in the 700s they've given us a roof. Ejection pin marks to come out, they are raised and they're going to affect the fit. Um, these won't matter because they're on the underside unless this sits down flush at the bottom of that hull. So maybe you want to remove these anyway, just, just good practice anyway to remove ejection pin marks. But that'll be lovely, you know, paint that dark grey, give it a wash or something, paint the walls white, job done. Because you're just going to be looking at it through those through those holes. But that's very nice indeed. Nice they've taken the trouble to do all that. And then here we have another bag, again, with two sprues in, which I don't approve of. So we have sprue J and H in here. So this is sprue J. Nice they've done the, the through letter so you can see it. And uh, yeah, I don't know what they're thinking of having these sprues double bagged. You know, when you consider you've got these legs sticking out here, you've got this thin mast, you've got these tiny parts here. You know, more tiny parts. I don't know what they're thinking of. Crazy having it double bagged. We've also got ejector pin marks here on the mast, which is unfortunate. There again, because it's double bagged, that's got damage, that's been broken. Oh dear, I'm going off this now. <laughs> um, but yeah, unfortunately, they've taken all that trouble to do that beautiful tray for the hull and everything. And then this is just, you know, I'm three bags in and two bags have got broken parts. So <laughs> great, isn't it? Um, yeah, just not well thought out. Um, and then here we have, sorry, I didn't finish going through that sprue, did I? We have this mast here. I was going to say we've got ejector pin marks on that main mast, which is unfortunate. So that's going to have to go. Um, we've got our rudders here. And there we are, more fragile parts here. But yeah, little, little look out there, that's the one. Oh dear, I hope this... I hope there's a cover on top of that because they've got a detector pin mark right in the top of it and there's one behind it as well. Oh, and another one in front. <laughs> oh, two in front. We've got one, two, three, four ejector pin marks in that little piece. Um, and that one's going to be difficult to get rid of because it's recessed and it's down in that notch. I don't know if something else goes over the top of that. And then here we've got this deck panel here. I'm assuming that is the bottom, I hope, because that's covered ejector pin marks as well. So yeah, hmm. so it's ejector, part, ejector pin mark city with broken parts. I don't quite know how you can put this in without the risk of damaging anything. Hmm. Not the best. Not the best at all, to be honest. 
Right, so these sprues here, again we've got two sprues here, we've got some slide moulding going on here. So this is sprue S. So there's that one piece island. So that's beautifully done. And then here we've got some, whatever they are, we've got some radar bits here. And there's another part of the island by the look of it with a great big grill on it. See that grill there? And then this one is R. Again, we've got slide moulding going on. We have this, um, this is another part of the island by the look of it. It's all very beautifully done. If they do a 350th one, it's going to be gorgeous because this is all very crisp and very sharp. But I hope they're watching this. They need to improve their bloody packaging. There we go. I always find the rather than these soft poly bags, the harder cellophane bags are better because they tend to slide across each other rather than sort of dig in together. If you know what I mean, you know, you get if you had the hard bags, the ones you know, the resealable ones like um Edward or whatever you use, then they tend to slide over each other, whereas the soft ones they tend to pick up because they're because they're soft. Um yeah, so very nice indeed. You can see how crisp that moulding is there on that upper area there. It's all very beautifully done. So again, we'll put this one back in here sensibly so we don't get too much damage. I mean, the thing is, once you've got it in your stash, it's not so much of a problem. It's when it's being transported and shaken about and everything, that's when all the damage occurs. If I find any serious damage, I'm going to be going for spare parts, I can tell you that. Right, so this one here, this one here, we have lots of bits and pieces of the um, of the hangar deck walls. Um, we can see on here there's some ribbing, but on there's some grill, so I'm assuming this is going to be exposed because that side is covered in ejection pin marks again. Um, this is all very nice, beautifully crispy moulded. And of course the other beauty of this be is 700, you don't need a massive shelf to put it on. So there it is. And of course if you've got the um, 700 scale Academy Enterprise, like I have and I've reviewed, this could sit alongside it and you can see how far things have come. Okay, so there's here's our hangar walls. So they're beautifully done. There's all our internal hangar detail, or is this the um, on the back, I'm not sure. I've got a feeling this is all hanger here. Yeah, beautiful. It's crisper than a lot of 350th kits I've seen. And it's nice that they've got all that detail in there. Which means it's going to be very easy for them to upscale this to 350th. Because they have all the models already. So that's a very nice And what have we got here? We've got another bag with two sprues in. Hopefully no damage. This is the last of the main sprues. And boy oh boy. This is ejector pin mark city here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. And there's a little square one there. 21, 22. 23, blimey, these tiny square ejector pin marks here on the outside edges, which is a nice touch because you don't really need to do much with them. Maybe these will be covered up with um, with other stuff, I don't know, but uh, they're certainly there and they're pretty bloody huge. We have lots of beautiful fine detail here, but this is going to be uh, going on the side of the ship, this is where the decks are going to come up through so that's going to be the underside of the deck so i'm assuming that all this area of ejector pin marks are going to sit over a structure one would hope otherwise you've got a lot of work to do they're all raised so they could be sanded out but oh, blimey i can't believe they needed all that you know if, if models of it can make a part that big with no ejector pin marks why can't these guys i don't know but the molding on there is is, is gorgeous really is lovely, isn't it? 
and then on here we have yeah all that's going to sit on top of this isn't it that's all going to sit on top of this sort of thing so I think we'll be okay so this is all our um this is all the, the, the hangar deck wall that flares out to the to the uh, to the outside of the uh, flight deck all beautifully done beautifully molded very very crisp we've got some shrink marks around the things but i think it all looks it adds to the accuracy i think rather than just having a completely bare dead flat panel i don't know if you can see what i mean but here you can see there's some there's some shrinkage around those but i think it's just going to add to the accuracy oh what a lovely detail there that's grills or windows or something i don't know very nice so that can go back in like that so yeah two bags parts damaged well we haven't finished yet but two bags so far parts damaged but damage is, is negligible so here we have another two sprues together in one bag do we have any damage these two are identical they're both sprue q and you can see here we have the contra rotating propellers for the ship and they look they look a little bit on the thick side but they're the nicest molded propellers i've ever seen or screws whatever you want to call them they're really nice and then we got the uh, the blast wall there which you can put up or have down and these were going in the hangar deck i think beautiful got some tiny little I'm not sure what they are there's a little tiny life raft a little run a life raft they uh inflatable is what i'm looking for that's very nice I've got the detail underneath there's an anchor there which is beautifully done it's all very very nice isn't it They definitely need to go back in a bag because they are just asking to get broken those parts They're tiny and what we've got here then we have oh, it's aircraft more aircraft and some other bits and pieces so we'll get all these out together okay so we've got loads of sprues in one bag here so we've got two of these so these are this is the p sprue we've got two of those we got the end sprue, which has got our F-18 Fs, I think. We've got two of those, so we've got four F-18 Fs, and then we've got the O sprues, which are F-18Es. So there we go, so we've got two, four, six, eight F-18s, and then we've got Hawkeyes there, and we've got F-35s in another bag there. So we'll have a quick look at these. You can see this is the uh, E with the with the shorter canopy. Oops, Daisy throwing it across the room. He says after moaning about their packaging, uh, we've got fins and rudders there for both aircraft. We've got undercarriage here. So yeah, one seven hundred scale undercarriage. Not quite sure if that's fully detailed or not, but uh, doubt it. <laughs> but um, there's a couple of videos on YouTube about how to make these little aircraft look better. So I suggest you go and watch them. They're very good. Um. And then there's your F-18F, basically the same in longer canopy and uh, big square intakes rather than the old F-18A through D um, rounded intakes. This is actually a bigger aircraft. Don't ever be fooled at thinking this is just a, a revamp. It's actually a new aircraft and it's bigger. It just looks similar, that's all. But yeah, beautiful. Very nicely done. Again, if you want to plaster the deck, you're going to need some more. And then here, I think... I'm not sure what these are. are. They life belts or what? I don't know. Life points. I'm not sure. These go all over the sides of the hull. Might just be great big buffers for knocking into things. I don't know. But they are um, all very crystal molded, whatever they are. I think I'll put that to one side and put that away after the video because that's going to be awkward to get back in. So here we have another bunch of aircraft. So we have. That's sprue K, so that's our two refueling drones. And we have two of sprue L. So this is your Hawkeye. And you can see the great big radar there. We've got the propellers. We've got the big tailplane there with the uh, double fins. Um, 
There's the actual fuselage itself. Lovely. Wings there, they, they've got panel surface detail on them. Panel lines, undercarriage is there. And then we've got the edge in the cells here. The fuselage, looking beautiful. So that's very nice. And then here we've got our drones, which are the simplest of the aircraft. So we've just got two aircraft and three undercarriage legs for each. So we've got two nose gears there and then four main gears there. Lovely. And then here, I'll put those back over there. And then here's our final sprue. Yes, this is our final sprue and we have this is sprue M, quite clearly, and we have our F-35C, so obviously we've got six of these. And that on the ends of the wings is little um, ejector tabs, which you'll cut off. And then we've got our fins here, and undercarriage here. So, hang on, we've got one, two, three nose gear, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so these are, these are main gear, and these are nose gear. You see the catch of the shape of those quite nicely. All the detail underneath. So yeah, on the whole, I'm very impressed with this. Um, but it would be like a nine and a half out of ten because it's brilliant. The moulding is lovely and everything, in my opinion. But the um, the packaging in these bags is awful. Having these sprues all together is awful. I bet everyone's got every one of these kits has got some sort of damage somewhere because of these dafty soft bags they're using and having them quite loosely bagged. I mean, even Ruvel, when they do the multiple sprues, they wrap the sprues up with the plastic and then sellotape it so that everything's held together and it can't all slide around. Because that's when the damage happens, is when the sprues slide together. But um, other than that, it's really, really nice. I mean, when you compare this to... Um, what was I was looking at? What kit was I looking at recently? I have a feeling it was the Great War Hobbies kit I was looking at and the sprues had legs in so that they were stackable so they could put them in the bag and then tighten the bag up and then nothing could move around because you know the sprue had a hole in the top and a peg in the bottom so they would actually stack together very very clever idea um, I'm sure that was Great War Hobby if it's not I'm sorry I should be crediting someone else but um yeah these multi-bag sprues for me are a real down you know real downer um, I can't stand seeing sprues multi-bagged. I know it's great for the environment because it's less plastic bags and everything. But if we do our res bit responsibly and recycle the bags properly, I can't see what the problem is. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it's, you're spending sixty odd pound on a model kit. You want to get it to your door as it was intended. And uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, to have a kit like this, which I've bought at a show, so it hasn't really gone through much transportation. It hasn't had to come through Royal Mail or anything. Um, you know, to have two broken parts purely, it's not because of abuse, you know, it's not because the box is damaged or anything, because it's not, it's perfect. But yeah, to have broken parts because of the the thoughtless packaging, um, I think that's uh, I think that's a real shame. But anyway, on the whole though, I mean, eight and a half out of ten, I guess, um, you know, as a kit, it's, it's gorgeous. I don't know how it goes together, obviously, I haven't built it. As I say, there is a video on YouTube. Amigraphy has built this in one video. You can go and have a look. And it does look very nice when done. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just going to quickly look before we go. Does that boot line come up? No, the boot line is going to come up to the seam. So basically, you're going to have the sink mark just above the boot line. Okay. Um, but... If anything, it's going to add a bit of authenticity, I think, because the ship wouldn't be perfectly flat anyway. I know you're going to say it would be the 700th. It looks like they were guns, those little things I was looking at. Um, it would be, I know, I know you'll say, you know, you wouldn't see all that um, canning on the skin in 700 scale. But I think you probably would when you see these ships close up in the photographs and stuff. They look a bit of a mess. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon. And... Um, if you've seen anything wrong with this kit or anything particularly like, stick it down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe just there. And um, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. And 
I cannot believe this guys, this whole video, little Dottie's 11 weeks old, she's been led here next to me underneath the bench um, on a little bed and uh, not a whimper. I'm going to see what happens when I turn the camera off and stop talking because if it was Jess she'd be out here with a toy as soon as I stop talking so we'll see what happens. See you later guys, thank you for watching.